Good to be back. Well, coming off a disappointing showing in the Iowa caucuses, Governor Ron DeSantis suspended his presidential campaign and returned to Florida. As the Tampa Bay Times reported, lawmakers and lobbyists are waiting to see which version of the governor they're going to get. Will he be subservient to former President Trump and his many allies in Tallahassee? Will he come up with a bold new list of policy objectives? Will the governor, who still has three years left on his final term, face a less compliant Republican majority in the state legislature? DeSantis is already showing Floridians and legislative leaders that he intends to wield the full power of his office in the time he has left. Within 24 hours of suspending his campaign, DeSantis held back-to-back -back meetings and calls with legislative staff, chimed in on national border security issues, and reminded lawmakers that he is still willing to use his veto power. On Monday, DeSantis sank a GOP-led effort to use Florida taxpayer money to pay off Donald Trump's legal expenses. The show of force was seen by some of his allies as an indication that the governor is again taking charge in Tallahassee. And Paul, Matt Dixon and the NBC News crew came up with this list of missteps by the DeSantis campaign. I want to ask you about them. Uh, DeSantis burned through money on staff way too early and then used a lot of money to do private air travel. There was infighting with the Never Back Down Super PAC and a great deal of that staff had turnovers. He moved too far to the right, scared off some country club conservatives who are also often big donors, and he failed to build a grassroots small donor base. So much of his massive financial halls were maxed out donations from wealthy donors. That's what NBC News says. What, what do you think? What, was, what were the problems with the DeSantis campaign? Yeah, no, I think those were all valid. Um, and the problem with relying on those big donors is when they turn on you, there goes a lot of your money. Um, to the to the question of um, what's he how is he going to govern now we've seen five years of him and even though a year of that or a little more than a year of that was on the campaign trail for uh, president it, he you know he has his own ideology and it's pretty far right and it's a lot of it has to do with um, culture issues and I think he's going to fall right back into the the culture war frame that he was in before he mm -hmm. took off for Iowa Travis, I want to put up a list of, of uh, allies of DeSantis, House Speaker right. Paul Renner, Senate President Kathleen Pasadomo, State Senator Blaze Angolia. These are some right. of the, the big name Republicans up there in Tallahassee and around the state who lean toward DeSantis. Those that lean toward Trump, State CFO Jimmy Petronas, State Senator Joe Gruters, Congressman Matt Gates, State Representative Randy Fine, campaign consultant Susie Wiles, and Agriculture Commissioner Wilton Simpson. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, well. there were a lot of people in in members of Congress, for instance, who were Republicans, right. who endorsed Trump and not DeSantis. Right. How strong are the allies of DeSantis, uh, and how? how <laughs> well, we're going to find <laughs> out. You know, I thought his I thought his message would resonate. Some of the far right stuff would resonate better in Iowa. It turns out it did about as well as my diet's been going, which is not to say <laughs> to say not very well. Um, he. He just uh, never seen the game traction out there, and you know uh, it's a long ways out there. So you got to travel out there somehow. I don't know. A lot I don't of know about the private air travel. Personality too. He, you know, you know, it's Ronald Reagan bonded with the people. He was the great communicator, and I'm not sure. I mean, I have seen every candidate I've ever seen get better. Okay, I've seen some pretty poor announcements, and, and candidates get better on the stump. He he has gotten better over the years. He has. I think he's gotten better connecting with people and. He, me, he won me over. I really wasn't a huge uh, a fan early on, uh, given some, you know, what I see his personality, you know, and the way they interact with people. Uh, but he's he's really, I mean, he's, he's a hard worker. He's going to be back in there. He's in Osceola County right now at an event. He was in the um, Everglades on Thursday. Yeah, so so he's, he's right back at work. What about Paula's point that he's liable to concentrate on cultural issues, bring out the, you know, Florida's the state where woke goes to die, bring out that phrase again? I think maybe those cultural issues were an eye towards the primary for the presidency. And so uh, there's some some real nuts and bolts issues that probably need to be addressed with regard to transportation and taxation and, and, and our state and running our state. So hopefully he'll dig down in the weeds and get into some of those issues and we can really address some of those things that I think maybe haven't been on the front burner for, for a little too long. Stanley, what, where, where do you think the governor's going to head? I mean, during his state of the state message, he really didn't offer any new initiatives. He wanted. To, he he said, "Look, we've done really great the last four years of my." I think that there's two Ron DeSantis's. I think there's two different people. When he first took office, I thought that he was really going to govern the whole state, and then I think when he decided to run for president, I think he became ultra right. I think that he started with these cultural issues, everything against equity and equality. 
I think his real big problem was is that he was running against somebody who does the same thing. So when it comes down to it, you're comparing a Cadillac against an Oldsmobile, and there, the Delta wasn't enough. So, so that's the reason why he finished where he did. Mm -hmm. Amy, uh, Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, said that uh, when DeSantis this week stepped down and suspended his campaign, he was saving himself for the next presidential election. And Newsom thought that this was a smart thing for DeSantis to do. To step down? Yeah. Well, I think that uh, it was an obvious step. It was an easy decision for him. He didn't have, there was no path forward. But I'll tell you, I was in Tallahassee this week, and the whole complex is full of anxiety. I heard staffers bemoaning openly about his return and what, and what the future weeks hold. And the culture wars, I'm afraid they're not over. I mean, we see legislation that legislators themselves are presenting that uh, deepen that um, attack on those who are, are, are most at the margins of our society already. So we are absolutely bracing ourselves for more book bans and more, you know, uh, hit downs on our trans Floridians and more, we see plenty more re uh, attacks on reproductive freedom in the bills that have been presented. And we certainly expect that DeSantis is going to support and, and, and actually try to advance his own agenda along these lines. Mm -hmm. Stanley, you were going to say something? Well, I don't think that, that his, his political aspirations upwards are over. Uh, I think that he's going to really try to, like, uh, not induce, but I think he's going to amplify his brand. And so I would agree with you very much, because he's going to try to use those things when he runs in president, you know, like in, in, in the years to come. Amplify, so I, I, I don't know about amplify his brand. I will say I believe the governor is is a true conservative and he actually believes what he's out there doing and when he makes an appointment to the judiciary as an example i know that he grills those appointees in his office and that he is not taking any of that lightly and if they think you're not uh, a real conservative you're gonna have a problem getting appointed yeah, but uh what, what gavin newsom's points was that uh that the governor would lose the florida primary in march if he continued his race, but I'm wondering how far does the anti-woke campaign, how far do the culture war issues propel DeSantis if he's waiting for 2028? <laughs> I, 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 I agree with Gavin Newsom that <clears throat> getting out of the race um, might be the right thing for him to do if he has political aspirations, but I think he damaged himself so much during this race that he doesn't have a bright political future. Okay, we'll, we'll see if he shows up on Fox News a lot. Again, I think that it was a smart re re uh, reason for him to drop out for one thing. One of the things that he said against the candidate from South Carolina, he says, well, how can you be a viable candidate if you lose your own state? Truth of the matter is he would have lost was, the state of sure. Florida. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons why I think he dropped out. Of he's it. also out of money and his donor base was drying out. I think okay. he's about to lose South Carolina too, so. All right.